At Area 51, I believe I, I saw some military personnel, but uh, you know, no, no, no one I can identify or rank or, you know. Is this research confined to the U.S. government, or did you see any international involvement? At one time, the Russians were involved, and supposedly there was some breakthrough made by our team, however this project was split up. And right after that happened, uh, the Russians were no longer permitted on the facility at all. And, uh, you know, that's, that's all I know about it. What was discovered, why they were kicked out, when they started working with us, is all unknown to me. You were hired to replace a scientist killed in the project. What exactly happened there? Allegedly, obviously, I, I didn't see this, and I don't know it to be fact, but this is what I was told, that I was hired uh, to replace one of a couple people that were killed uh, while working on one of the reactors from one of the crafts. Apparently, they, for whatever reason, cut open an operating reactor, and the device exploded, killing both of them. The scientists that were killed there, uh, allegedly the detonation from the explosion was fairly large. Uh, it would have rivaled a small tactical nuke. So it was done at the Nevada test site, and it was to be passed off as an un unannounced nuclear, nuclear test. Did you have any direct contact or communication with aliens? No, not at all. Tell us about the briefing files. Under what conditions did you gain access to them? I was put into the briefing room with uh, 121 or 22 briefings and really was just told to sit and read through them. I think they were there just to mainly educate me on, on what was going on. They weren't a complete in-depth in explanation on everything else, but just uh, essentially a brief synopsis on some of the other projects that were going on there. Supposedly, the information, now this isn't something that I determined, it's something I was told, that uh, the crafts originated from uh, a planet that orbited the Zeta Reticuli star system, Zeta Reticuli 1 and Zeta Reticuli 2 are two, two stars of a binary star system. Uh, the craft allegedly came from there. One or two autopsy photographs I saw uh, dealt with just a small photograph, a bus shot essentially, just head, shoulders and chest of an alien where the uh, uh, chest was cut open in T-fashion and one single organ was removed. Uh, the organ itself in the, in the other picture was uh, cut and vivisectioned, essentially, the, uh, showing the different chambers in there. Uh, this was totally unrelated to anything I was doing, but from that photograph, it looked like you know, what you see in UFO lore as the typical gray. So how tall it was from what I could see, I, I couldn't tell, because I only saw a portion of the photograph. But if everything else you see is correct, you know, I would imagine it was three and a half or four feet tall but uh, there again you know all I had to see was a photograph and you know I didn't have much to go on. You mentioned these beings have historically interacted with man. How? What was involved there? Allegedly this interaction has occurred since you know man was a simian creature and uh, you know there were genetic alterations made. How specifically did the briefings detail how the aliens manipulated our genetics over the centuries? It mentioned 65 or 63 uh, corrections or additions to the genetic makeup uh, that finally resulted in, you know, a, a human creature. In an earlier interview, you had mentioned you saw what you thought may be an alien. Was it an alien? What did you see? What I had said and all that occurred was I was walking by a door, uh, a door that had a small 9x9 nine nine window in it, little wires running through it, and glanced in there and there were two uh, either technicians, scientists, or whoever they were looking down at something. And what that something was caught my eye and I never really did see what it was. A lot of people have asserted, well, there was an alien, there are aliens working around there, and so on and so forth. I mean, I, I don't think that was the case. But uh, who knows? I was, you know, 
you're seeing all these fantastic things and your mind gets going and you know you catch something out of the corner of your eye who knows what your mind's going to come up with so I, I certainly wouldn't stand on that as fact by any means what was the incident in 1979 that brought the alien exchange program of information to a halt again this is a story that was relayed to me and uh, Allegedly, what happened in 79, there was some sort of information exchange going on where there were actual live aliens at the facility. And at one particular point, there was an area where some security personnel went to enter. And apparently, because of not the sidearms, but the bullets in the sidearms, from what I understand, if they would have entered the area, the bullets would have detonated. Uh, and supposedly one of the creatures tried to stop the security personnel from entering the area and a fight ensued and the bottom line from the altercation was that the uh, security personnel I don't remember how many were involved but were all killed and they died of head wounds and that's all that all that I heard of that story what was your job description at S4 my official job description was a senior staff physicist. Uh, I don't know if I actually had that position when I was there, because I was there so infrequently. I wasn't supervising anyone, so I, uh, that, that was the official position I was hired under. But uh, whether or not I actually acted in that capacity, I don't know. What was the size of the staff working on Project Galileo? Well, there were 22 people employed there totally. And that was specifically for the Galileo project? No, for the entire project. Oh, I see. There were 22 people with Majestic Clearance. I had Majestic Clearance. Majestic Clearance was designated as uh, clearance 38 levels above Q clearance. And Q clearance is the civilian uh, top secret clearance. When did you see your first disc? The first disc I saw, I believe it was the second, or I think it was the third time I was up there. Uh, normally the bus pulled around to the opposite end of the facility, which was the main entrance, and that's where we went in. On um, this particular occasion, it pulled up to one of the hangar doors, which were normally closed, and the, the last one was open. We came out, and I saw the disc in the hangar. Uh, upon seeing it, it, it struck me that, well, this explains all the UFO sightings, not thinking that it was an extraterrestrial craft, that this must have been some advanced form of fighter that we've been working on for years and, you know, people have just caught it being tested, so on and so forth. And uh, it never even occurred to me, even though I was looking at an extraterrestrial vehicle, that, you know, this wasn't man-made. When did you realize the craft was not of earthly origin? Well, it probably really hit me when I got inside the craft and looked around and began to understand how the craft was operated and finally grasped the whole project as a whole as what we were doing the fact that we weren't building this thing we were trying to find out how it was made we were back engineering it what is back engineering well, back engineering is taking a finished product and finding out how the device or product was